powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. search the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough but you came along and put me back together now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Hi, friends, and welcome to Restoration Church Online. We are so glad that you are participating today, and happy Easter. 
My name is Jake McLaughlin, and I'm the pastor, and I am joined today by Eddie Dickerson, our worship leader, who's going to bring some awesome music, and, and we look forward to sharing this online worship experience with you. If you would, please take a moment and let us know you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube by saying hi in the comments or by texting RL here to 29456. We would love to stay connected with you. And again, we're just so excited to be with you and friends, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. You hid in glory in creation. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil torn me. For you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name. The name of Jesus. Let's have a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for this Easter Sunday. Thanks be to God that your Son resurrected from the dead. Lord, today we're going to look at Holy Scripture that tells the story of an empty tomb and what the disciples would come to do after that. And so, Lord, I pray that we might have an experience of your mercy and your grace in the hearing of the Scripture and hearing of the message today. Lord, um, it is... 
it is quite a thing for us to come together to worship, be it, albeit online or in person. Lord, I would just pray that whoever is listening to this or watching this online might have an experience of your loving presence, that they may know the power of the resurrection in their own lives, that they may live in such a way that um, hope and joy exudes from who they are. No doubt, Lord, each of us come to um, worship with different things on our hearts and on our minds. Lord, I would just pray that um, you would hold those things with us. That you would mend the wounds that need to be healed. That you would walk alongside us as we journey through our day-to-day -day lives. And Lord, that you would um, offer us your, your loving grace so that we can live uh, bravely and courageously in the world so that we can not only love our neighbors, but also love you. And Lord, we pray this all in your son's gracious and holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, uh, there are a few things happening in the life of our church that I would love to just tell you about briefly. And the first is, I would love to invite you to our Spring Bash and Denim Drive happening on Sunday, May 1st, right after worship. We're going to be collecting denim and um, other gently used clothing for the Dulles South Neighborhood Closet, um, along with having an outdoor celebration with Mr. Uh, Falafel Food Truck, uh, games for kiddos, and uh, raffle prizes as well. Uh, we're really looking forward to this wonderful outdoor celebration, and I hope that not only you'll come and, and bring some clothing to donate, but that you'll also invite your friends to be a part of this as well. Um, and the other thing I would like to talk about just briefly is your generosity. You know, we believe at Restoration Church that generosity is a part of our spiritual life. And so for all the ways that you give, I want to say thank you for enabling us to be able to uh, do ministry in the community, to reach people online and in person. And if you want to learn more about how you can support our shared ministry, you can go to restorationloudon.org slash give. And now Eddie will lead us in another song. are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are way maker Miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, yes. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here turning lives around 
I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed, and they still did not understand from Scripture, that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May we all be blessed by the hearing of these words. Let's have a word of prayer. Almighty and holy God, thank you for this day, this Easter celebration. And Lord, I just pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts might be honoring and pleasing to you, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Um, So friends, I know it's a bit of a cliche, uh, but Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz had something right, that there's no place like home. Think to yourself. There's no place like home. Now think about it. After a long business trip, after a week of vacation or hiking or living in a tent, or the first time you go home after your first semester at college, friends, there is no place like home. There are rhythms of home that you don't experience elsewhere. Home is is most often a physical place, but it doesn't have to be. Home can be a feeling you get when you're with people who really love you. Just as easily as home can be a friend's house where you can let your guard down and just be you. Now, I was talking uh, recently to another pastor uh, about what home feels like. And, and I said, do you want to really know how you can tell if you're at home when you're not really at home? Um, when you're at a friend's house or something, go into their refrigerator and see what they do. If they pay you no mind, you know that you're home. 
you know, when we, when we find home, what we're really talking about is a sense of belonging. And belonging is the secret sauce of home. It's a sacred and powerful feeling. And I would argue that belonging, uh, this sense of being loved and welcomed for who you are, not what you do or where you're from, is one of the most powerful feelings in the world. It is a feeling that can sustain any uncertainty or chaos that will find its way into our lives, and we know it does. When you feel like you belong, you feel as though you're a part of a larger family. And the Gospel according to John says in part that Jesus' mission in the world was to help us see that we all belong. Jesus came so that you and I could be a part of the household of God. Early in John's Gospel, he says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not, born not of natural descent or uh, of human decision or a, a hu husband's will, but born of God. You know, right now we are living in a world where people are desperate for belonging. People long to feel like they're somebody to someone. And in Jesus' resurrection, we are somebody to someone. We are born into the household of God. And this morning, I, I want to look at the resurrection of Jesus through the eyes of Mary Magdalene, who made a startling discovery on that first Easter. You should know a little bit about Mary. She was from Magdala, a city of, uh, on the Sea of Galilee. And for years, uh, Mary did not feel like she was a child of God because she experienced um, despair in her past. In fact, in Scripture, it says um, she suffered from demons. And now, we don't really know what she suffered from. It could have been um, a form of mental illness, uh, trauma she suffered, or bad decisions that she made that alienated her from other people. What we do know is that Jesus healed her and showed her that she was one of God's beloved daughters. Jesus restored her health, pointed her towards wholeness, and gave her new life. And because of this act of healing, Mary became a faithful disciple of Jesus. She would be one of the women who supported Jesus and the others out of her own wealth. She followed Jesus wherever he went, and she knew the joy of his ministry, and she was loyal. You know, when others fled after Jesus' arrest, she was present when he suffered and died at the crucifixion. She was there for all of it. And as we read in John's Gospel, Mary is met with an empty tomb that morning. She assumed, she assumed his body had been taken. Jesus' crucifixion had been a, hairy, a heavy burden to carry, and now there was this. There she was, encountering another problem, which led in that moment to the disappointment in the present. You know, the missing body of Jesus was just one more thing in a long list of very difficult and tragic events in a span of a very few short days. Now, I wonder, too, if, if you can relate to Mary's disappointment. Now, obviously, we weren't there at the tomb with Mary, but do you ever feel disappointed with the present? Like nothing can go right or the way that you hoped? When we, when we experience disappointment like that, it's hard to feel joy. We can easily think of the challenges and setbacks that happen on our load in our own lives, not to mention everything else that's happening in the world from the suffering in Ukraine to concerns over rising inflation in our country, and not to mention the political polarization of our society. And so it's very fair to say that Mary is not the only one who comes to Easter with the possibility of disappointment in the present. But then Mary sees something new. John tells us. He tells us this. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Mary sees Jesus, but she doesn't see Jesus. Now, you may ask, how could something like that happen? How could she see Jesus but not really see Jesus? And I'll, I'll tell you how. Her disappointment of the present led to a dread of the future. Mary thought the future was bleak. All she could see was difficulty and pain. And when our present circumstances are hard, it is incredibly challenging to see hope on the horizon. But isn't it funny that that's when Jesus shows up? In the midst of Mary's pain and grief, she encounters the risen Christ. And friends, that's what Jesus does. In the midst of our own despair, our own disappointment and dreads, Jesus shows up. 
and hope and joy come with him. You know, I'm reminded today of uh, Death Valley in California, which is a lifeless stretch of desert and one of the hottest places on earth with uh, summertime temperatures averaging about 115 degrees. There's searing heat and very little rainfall, and it creates a place where uh, life as we know it really can't survive for very long. But about once every 10 years, something really miraculous happens. It's called a super bloom. After a rare spring rainfall, the moisture from the rain causes dormant wildflower seeds just below the surface of the valley to germinate. And in a very short time, wildflowers shoot up from the ground and bloom all at once, transforming lifeless Death Valley into a place of vibrant colors and breathtaking beauty. In any given moment, below the surface of lifeless and dangerous Death Valley, there is amazing new life lying dormant, waiting for just the right time to come forth. And the beauty of a super bloom reminds us that there is more to Death Valley than we might have originally thought. Friends, Easter is similar. Easter comes along every year to remind us that just below the surface of dread, disappointment, and despair, there is new life waiting to come forth. Easter reminds, Easter reminds us that there's more to life than what we know or understand. Jesus is our super bloom giving way to new life and beauty. And herein lies the good news. It's Easter, even if we don't feel like it is. Beneath our circumstances and our fleeting emotions is the joy of the resurrected Christ. You know, Mary and the other disciples could not imagine that Jesus would be resurrected, even though he told them about it time and time Again, they thought they had lost everything, even their status as members of the family of God. They were scared, they were lost, and they were lonely. They were at the lowest they could be. And even Mary, whose life had been healed by Jesus, could not see that he was standing right in front of her. And what I want you to notice in particular is that when Mary tells the other disciples about Jesus, she doesn't call him teacher or rabbi anymore. She says, I have seen the Lord. In John, in John's gospel, the Greek word for seeing is horeo, which means to know, to believe in, and to trust. In the midst of her story, at what seems to be the lowest of the low, she encounters hope. Mary came to the tomb with despair, disappointment, and dread, but instead found hope on Easter morning. Jesus was not dead. Jesus had been resurrected. He overcame the despair of her past. He is greater than the disappointment of our present. He has filled the future with hope and possibility. And his resurrection gives us the power to become children of God. And that means that, means that even when we are struggling in our own lives, we belong to God and to one another. You know, Mary was a part of the household of God, and friends, we are too. And when we yoke ourselves to this truth of our faith, the promise that John wrote in his first chapter is absolutely possible when he says, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. You know, there's good news here for all of us. Despair, disappointment, dread, and death may have their day, but they will never, ever overtake us because of Easter. And friends, it is Easter. For Christians in Ukraine today, it's Easter. For those who long for community and mercy and justice in the world, it's Easter. It's Easter in the ICU, it's Easter in the inner city, and in the countryside, friends, it is Easter in Death Valley and in every place in between. The resurrection was a cosmic event that changed the shape of this world. And Christ's resurrection makes us a part of the household of God. We become a family. And we don't have to hope, we don't have to hope 
and wait when the circumstances are different or when the people come around to our way of thinking. We have hope right now, right here, because Jesus has been raised from the dead. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy 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 this is amazing grace this is unfailing That you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done. Amen. Friends, it's Easter. No matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in your life, and I don't say that to dismiss it. I say that for us to recognize that below the surface of our lives, below the surface of our circumstances, 
is this resurrection truth that death can't win. Death doesn't win. Hope and joy, grace and mercy, loving community, the kingdom of God will come. And so, friends, I wish you a happy Easter. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and may the grace and peace of our resurrected Lord be with you and with your loved ones. Amen.